late December 1967, Charlie Battery began a series of moves that took them first from Phuc Vinh to Phu Loi. From Phu Loi, several gun sections were displaced to fire heavy artillery support for Arvin and Special Forces operations. The word to move again reached Charlie Battery during the first week of January 1968. And while headquarters and two gun sections prepared to move from Phu Loi to their supporting activities, and began a motor convoy to the rendezvous point, Quan Moy. Morale in esprit de corps was high, but the next two months were to be the most trying days of commanders and subordinates alike. All elements of Charlie Battery merged at Quan Moy and continued northeast to Lok Ninh. Everyone had heard of the small battleground of a few months previous, and now they were to defend it. The firebase was no larger than the battery's compound, and the Viet Cong found the range within one week. This small battleground became known as the First Battle of Lok Ninh. It occurred between 29 October and 7 November 1967, fought by the Viet Cong, the Arvin, CID groups, and the U.S. Army. Lok Ninh was located in Binh Long Province, approximately 9 miles east of the Cambodian border and 70 miles north of Saigon. As a part of his strategic preparations for the Tet Offensive to come in early 1968, General Va Nguyen Zap began attacking isolated Allied bases in the fall of 1967 in hopes he could draw U.S. and Arvin forces outside of several major South Vietnamese cities. This left the principal forces left to guard Lok Ninh, CIDG groups, a company of South Vietnamese regional forces and a platoon of South Vietnamese popular forces. According to Wikipedia, the battle was considered a U.S. Arvin victory, with the United States claiming more than 850 enemy killed, with Allied losses at 50. Work began to carve a livable area from the face of the jungle. The 82nd Engineer Battalion was moved into Locked In just a day and a half after Charlie Battery became operational, and troops from Alpha, Headquarters, and Service Batteries were airlifted or convoyed from Quan Loi and Long Bin to assist the Engineer Unit under the Self-Help Program. Within three weeks, the fire support base became known as the Quarter Million Dollar Project. Not only a vast amount of supplies and manpower had been poured into Lok Ninh, but with each round fired, the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese Army supply routes were severely damaged. Once again, the order to move out was received and Charlie Battery left Lok Ninh and all the work behind as the road warren trucks began their long journey to Benoit area. The order to move was unexpected, but a second order to detach two gun sections to the 1st Infantry Division at Xi'an came shortly and was even more unexpected. Even after five moves within one month, Charlie Battery's morale was still in an unbelievably high state. But suddenly, in the first week of February, the Tet Offensive shocked South Vietnam and U.S. forces. On January 8th and 9th, 1968, Battalion headquarters had moved to Quan Loi in order to more effectively control and communicate with the outlying batteries. Quan Loi had few underground living quarters, only fighting bunkers and slit trench bunkers. When the Tet Offensive struck, a series of construction projects were started at Quan Loi very soon. Headquarters battery continued to coordinate counter rocket and mortar fires and support fires for the 1st Brigade, 1st Infantry Division, as well as close artillery support for the regular force and popular force special forces groups. The strain of long sleepless nights and full work days could be seen in officers and enlisted men alike taking its toll. The dark hours of Tet extended to all of Vietnam and no one was left on scarred. It is not our intention here to describe how the Tet Offensive was affected across South Vietnam, but rather to tell you how it affected the 6th to the 27th Artillery. On February 5th, an ammunition convoy from Long Binh arrived at Quan Loi. At 2100 hours that same day, Quan Loi Base Camp came under one of the most savage rocket and mortar attacks of the Tet Offensive. 
even though the ammunition trucks with service battery personnel were dispersed throughout the Alpha Battery Motor Pool area. An enemy 122mm rocket exploded as a direct hit on two 5-ton trucks. Shrapnel damaged several service battery trucks which were still loaded with 175mm and 8-inch howitzer projectiles. The 5-ton truck gas tank soon exploded while Alpha and service battery personnel fought the fire while incoming rounds continued to fall in the area. Because of the diligent work in fighting the fires, only the two Alpha battery 5-ton trucks were damaged. Charlie Battery was still a split battery rather than a permanent unit and conducted fire support from Xeon and Benoit. One of the two firing sections at Xeon soon moved to Ku Chi and one section from Benoit was moved to the area around Trang Bang. Since these two areas were still experiencing direct effects of the Tet Offensive, the remaining section at Xeon continued to fire support for the 1st and 25th Infantry Divisions as well as Arvin units and the Capital Military District. On February 25, 1968, the Charlie Battery Section at Benoit motor marched to Xeon and joined the 8-inch platoon. From there, the battery supported operations until March 10th, at which time it moved to their original position at Phuc Vinh. Thus ended a three-month period of almost continuous moves. Charlie Battery was a tired, convoy-weary, and strained crew, but was returned after being rejoined as a complete unit at Xi'an. Three days later, on March 13, 1968, Alpha Battery, 2nd Battalion, 11th Artillery, was attached to the 6th of the 27th Artillery. With their 155mm guns, they began fire support of the 101st Airborne Division, 3rd Brigade. With coordinated firing with Charlie Battery at Phuc Vinh, the term of heavy and medium artillery began dealing death blows to VC and North Vietnamese Army units. On this same date, Lieutenant Colonel Richard S. Bullock assumed command of the battalion, replacing Lieutenant Colonel Eugene J. O'Grady. This was a period of intense activity for the battalion. Command and control were much more difficult than normal due to the three-way split of headquarters, supply at Long Vin, operations at Phuc Vin, and administration at Quan Loi. The firing batteries too remain widely scattered, covering over 10,000 square kilometers of territory with their combined range of fans. The 6th of the 27th Artillery lost its sixth casualty during the Vietnam War on July 19, 1968. Chief Warrant Officer Raymond Albert Young died in a crash of his helicopter on July 19, 1968. He was by himself flying an OH-6A Cayuse helicopter, tail number 66-07825. A report of the crash states the following. A description of how the accident occurred is very difficult. It appears that the pilot was flying from Zhuan Lock to Black Horse when the tail section separated from the aircraft. The only witness stated that the aircraft fell straight down and that it was spinning around and around. It was not possible to determine what hit the ground first, but it appears the aircraft hit in right nose low attitude and then rolled over. The aircraft came to rest in an upright position with the pilot retained in the seat. He was survived by his mother, Mrs. Cammy C. Young, and his wife, Mrs. Joyce M. Young, both of Chicago. He had started his tour of duty on 9-24-1967. A fellow officer who served with Ray, Walter Mike Prane, described how he learned of the crash in a memory post on Fold3.com. The day Ray was killed, I was in the operations shack on the airfield at Phu Loi. 
It was early evening and I was filling in for the duty officer while he was getting something to eat. I got a call from a major who asked me if we had a chief warrant officer, Young, assigned to our unit. I said yes, and the major said he went down a mile south of Zuan Lock. I asked if he was all right, and the major said no, he's dead. It must have taken a while before I was able to ask what happened, because when I did, the major had already hung up. Ray was one of the most experienced and well-liked pilots in the aviation section. It wasn't unusual for one of the unit commanders to specifically ask for Ray for a particular mission, as was the case the day he was killed. He was flying a Hughes OH-6A Cayuse, one of a half a dozen or so we had just received from the States. The helicopter was recovered and sent back for evaluation. The report we received a couple of months later stated that the tail section had separated at station 270 for no apparent reason. Ray was one of those guys you just instantly liked. I still think of him as a friend, even though he is on the other side now. The only difference is he is 22 and I'm 60. September 1968 was a busy time for all of the batteries of the battalion. In addition to providing heavy artillery fire support, the battalion was preparing for the annual general inspection, a series of courtesy inspections implemented by battalion and group teams and by request from the 610th Maintenance Battalion. These inspections and much hard work brought the battalion to the end of September completely prepared for the inspector general's visit from September 30th to October 4th. Based on a rating of satisfactory or unsatisfactory only, the battalion was judged satisfactory, with many areas rated excellent and called to special attention. With the arrival of the 1st Cav Division into the Three Corps Tactical Zone in early November 1968, replacing the 1st Infantry Division and the area surrounding all firing batteries of the battalion, the mission of the batteries were changed. Batteries A, B, and F, 16th Artillery, now fell under the 1st Cav Division Artillery, while Charlie Battery remained under two Field Forces Artillery. Also in early November 1968, an ammunition supply point was established at Quan Loi and Phuc Vinh. Consequently, Battery A and Battery C, 6th to the 27th Artillery respectively, were resupplied directly. Battery B and Phuc Vinh and Battery F, 16th Artillery, were resupplied solely by aircraft from Ben Moi. By General Order 73, Department of the Army, on 27 November 1968, Bravo Battery 6 Battalion 27th Artillery finally was awarded a meritorious unit citation. The citation reads in part, their resourcefulness and determination were key factors in the devastating fire which they placed upon communist forces during the nine month period from October 1966 to June 1967, Battery B 6 Battalion 27th Artillery fired 30,000 rounds in the I Corps tactical zone, inflicting heavy casualties upon the hostile elements. Through their exemplary courage, esprit de corps, and total dedication to mission accomplishment, the battery's personnel contributed immeasurably to the United States military effort in the Republic of Vietnam. Civic action during 1968 continued to be a big priority even though the battalion was busy fighting a war. Renovation and repairs to schools at Quan Loi, An Lok, and Phuc Vinh, including donation of books to the schools, were accomplished during the period. Support of the Quan Loi Boy Scout troop by the battalion grew from 75 to 150 boys during the year. Repairs and renovation to the Quan Loi Montagnard Boarding School as well as to the Ann Loy Kindergarten and the Ann Lock Orphanage were also accomplished by the battalion. The battalion also conducted numerous MedCAPS programs during which over 800 Vietnamese patients were treated. 
On the 1st of December 1968, a platoon of 8-inch howitzers from Battery A, 6th of the 27th Artillery, displaced from Quan Loi to Lok Nin by surface convoy. Their mission remained the same, however. The displacement enabled the platoon to more effectively attack hard target complexes in the area and to further assist the 3rd Brigade 1st Cav Division. The platoon occupied LZ Kelly, which was secured by the 2nd of the 12th Cav Battalion. En route, the convoy was ambushed. Fortunately, there were no casualties or damage. However, it demonstrated the requirement for adequate convoy security. The platoon returned to Quan Loi on 6 December, where it rejoined its battery. Effective on 4 December 1968, Alpha Battery, 2nd Battalion, 11th Artillery, was detached from the 23rd Artillery Group and from the 6th of the 27th Artillery by General Order 5590. By the same General Order, Battery F, 16th Artillery, was assigned to the 23rd Artillery Group and was attached to the 6th of the 27th Artillery. Interestingly, there was no change in personnel involved, only a change in unit designation. By the end of 1968, the battalion was short of personnel. The shortage was the most in the 13 Alpha 10 Cannoneer MOS, with a shortage of 55. Gunners were down to 9 with 18 authorized, while section chiefs were down to 15 with 26 authorized. FDC was down below authorization by 5. The battalion participated in Operation Vietnam 1968. Operation Vietnam was a project whereby the students of E.W. Thurston Junior High School of Westwood, Massachusetts sent Christmas gifts to the 6th Battalion for distribution to military personnel in the area of Quan Loi. This was the fourth year the project had been undertaken. On November 7, 1968, the students of E.W. Thurston Junior High School mailed 34 packages weighing 700 pounds total. Postage for mailing the gifts was paid for by local civic action groups in Westwood, Massachusetts, such as the Lions Club and women's organizations. All of the packages arrived prior to Christmas unscathed. On Christmas Eve, the presents were distributed to the frontline infantry troops of the 1st Cav Division, the Air Force personnel, and the officers and enlisted men of the 6th Battalion. It was a thoughtful gesture of these young students to collect money for the project and then purchase items that soldiers in Vietnam might need. Westwood, Massachusetts was established in 1897. It is made up of a community currently of 16,266 individuals, located 12 miles southwest of Boston. So that you do not go away thinking that 1968 was an easy year in Vietnam for the 6th of the 27th Artillery, let me give you a rundown of its fire missions. From 1 November 1967 to 31 October 1968, a year, the battalion had a total of 62,471 fire missions. Of these missions, 49,269 rounds were fired by attached units of the 155, such as the 2nd of the 11th Artillery and F Battery, 16th Artillery. 50,583 rounds of 175 millimeter guns were fired. 69,175 8-inch rounds were included in those fire missions. The battalion fired a total of 169,072 total rounds during this period. Within just a few days in 1969, the battalion would fire its 300,000 round in Vietnam. 